The idea is join together to grow together. We divide it by towers. One is cybersecurity, another is marketing digital, AI analytics platform, banking, the manufacturing side, and uh, technology. Today, one of the main digital fundamentals is working not as a silos, work integrated. In the digital transformation, we understand we can contribute a lot, not only the business side, but the society in general. You can acquire anything if you want. Then we understand efforts sometimes is more important than talent. This is here on TV. My name is Hendrik Dekkers. I'm here today with Marco Stefanini, who is the founder and CEO of Stefanini Group. A very warm welcome, Marco. Thanks, uh, Hendrik, a lot for your invitation. And in, 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 in it's a so wonderful place. Marco, you have a degree in geology from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. You started your career as a software trainee in a bank. Um, and then in 1987, very early on, you started your own company, uh, Stefanini IT Solutions. That was initially a, tra a training, a software training company. Now, almost 35 years later, this has become a multinational company. You would have a turnover of more than a billion. You employ 27,000 people in 41 countries in 70 offices, and you are serving clients globally in 35 different languages. So Marco, that is quite an achievement in 35 years. So, But Marco, let's start with what is it that uh, Stefanini today stands for? What is it that Stefanini is really, really good at? Okay, thank you for your question. I think first of all, uh, we are really customer-centric organization. Mm -hmm. I think is one of the key points. Yep. The second, we are agile and flexible. You know that mainly now in the digital world, it's so important to be in, to have this behavior. Mm -hmm. okay? And the third one, we, we can say that we can mix very well some digital tools or solutions mm -hmm. or even mindset with even with IT traditional uh, service. That we can we can, we can offer a hybrid model mm -hmm. that to, we understand that we can offer, a, 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 we can add a lot of value to our clients. Yeah. And so your services are in infrastructure, they are in, in, in help desk support, they are in cybersecurity, they are in application development. It's a pretty complete set of IT services, correct? Yes, our, we have a wide scope. Mm -hmm. We can divide in two main groups. Mm -hmm. One is what we can call IT traditional services that uh, in applications, yeah. non-SIP, SIP, and also in digital workplace. Okay. It, it, is means, it means more in the infrastructure side. Mm -hmm. The other group is more in the digital side, okay. agile development and a lot of solutions that not only drive for the CIOs and technology, but also the business side. Okay. That uh, we have a lot of uh, digital companies that we call ventures. Mm -hmm. They are owned by us or 100% or the majority shares. And we keep the founders of these companies, mm -hmm. digital companies that we acquired in the last uh, five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And each of them, are very specialized in one subject, in okay. digital subject. Mm -hmm. AI, analytics, uh, industrial automation, core banking systems, um, a, a logistic and RFID solutions, mm -hmm. marketing digitals, digital, cybersecurity, that are, is a wide scope. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the cybersecurity company. That's a company in Bucharest that you have now as, as a joint venture, is that correct? Yes, uh, this Romanian company are very specialized in penetration tests. Mm -hmm. 
We already have in Bucharest uh, SOC, uh, Security Operations Center, mm -hmm. and we combine with another uh, cybersecurity company from our group, that is a joint venture, Stefanini Rafael. Okay. Rafael is a military uh, Israeli company. Mm -hmm. They built the famous Iron Dome that protect Israel against the missiles uh, against the, the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And they operate the system, but for us, that is important that they do uh, uh, all the cybersecurity service to protect the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. Then we can say that they are in the state of art in this area. Yep. And you know, that today is a so hot topic yes, yep. in the market. Okay. So you have built a kind of an innovation ecosystem then. So, so how does that really, really work? Can you tell us yes. the, your strategy for innovation? Yes. This is, we began as more the diversified business, mm -hmm. but uh, in the last uh, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. we focused in creating this innovation digital ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, as I said, I, uh, we acquired many different companies, each of one, is uh, each of them is a uh, is a uh, specialized in one subject, mm -hmm. and we keep the founders as a shareholder, yeah. uh, and they they uh, the, usually the minority, and they lead the company, and uh, we understand is a strong combination because they these founders bring the knowledge, the expertise of uh, uh, specialization specialized service, and we, our side, we can offer to them a more international operation. We can offer uh, uh, teams to develop more the software. We offer a structure. We offer business uh, sales channel. That mm -hmm. is a good combination. Yeah. And the idea is join together to grow together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we divide it by towers. One is cybersecurity, as we already talked, another is marketing digital, AI analytics platform, and uh, banking, and also in the manufacturing side, and, um, and uh, technology uh, tower. That's we divide yep. in six towers. Yep. This is what we call innovation ecosystem. This is the main part of this, this part of our group. But the most important that is not only this, we have a lot of partnership and relationship with uh, uh, what we can call open innovation. Mm -hmm. That's uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, relationship with big players like Google, like Adobe and others with uh, a lot of hundreds of uh, startups mm -hmm. also, university, academy, and also some funds, had, uh, private f uh, equity funds and mm -hmm. others. Okay. Now, your growth model, because the, your, your growth story is an, am is an amazing story. So your growth story is a combination of, uh, I would say, organic growth, of acquisitions, and then these joint ventures. Can you talk a little bit about the, the, the important acquisitions that uh, were key in the growth of yes. Stefanini? We like, as you said, we love the model mix, mixing uh, uh, organic growth and more acquisition. That mm -hmm. we understand this model brings more value to all the stakeholders. We can divide this, Stefanini, in three, uh, in during these 34 years, in three main phases. The first one is only organic growth until December to, uh, 2010. Okay. And December 2010, answer your question. We did our largest acquisition that uh, all our life. That uh, was a, a tech team company. Yep. Tech team was a U.S. public company that time, and they they were already global. Mm -hmm. Then allowed us to reinforce our uh, international presence. That yep. for us it 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 was a very important uh, uh, point. And this second phase between December 2010 and 2014, 13, mm -hmm. we did some international acquisition that of uh, that be, uh, allowed us to be very global company. Yep. 
And the last phase now, between 2014 and now, mm -hmm. we are mixing organic, uh, organic and also uh, uh, M&A acquisition. Yep. And we did more uh, small acquisition because that time, mainly in the beginning, 2014, 15, 16, most of the digital companies, B2B, were very small. Yep. Then we did this, we created this, what we uh, already talked about, the, the, our innovation ecosystem, to uh, this acquisition, but growing together. Yep. And we like that model, and we are in this phase. Okay. Now, now looking forward, I mean, you have already built a, a, a big company. What are, the, what are the current most important challenges that you have to further grow the company? Yes, I think the most important challenge is keeping practicing our purpose, mm -hmm. co-creating solutions for a better future. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in the digital transformation and also mainly after COVID, we understand we can contribute a lot, not only the business side, but the society in general. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful, yes, because in the past, when we, are, we were only IT company, we are in the kitchen, yes. Uh, we joke that uh, the clients remember us only when, when they had a problem, yeah. yes. <laughs> now it's different. We, are, we, we can participate much more, the results, the improving the society, that is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, opportunity. That's, uh, I think it is our main target is this. Okay. Now, Stefanini, you as the organization also put uh, quite an emphasis on uh, social responsibility and on corporate sustainability. So you've created the Stefanini Institute. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sure. You know, that's uh, our origin. We came from a poor country, yes, mm -hmm. Brazil. And uh, we began, we, we, under, we understood early in, in the beginning that it is important for so, social uh, activities or, uh, or um, uh, purpose, that it is important to focus in something. Mm -hmm. In that time, we decided to focus in education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we understand for Latin America in general, this is the main issue. If you solve it, we can solve everything in consequence. Then we began, we began some partnership with uh, some schools, public schools. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years ago, we began our Stefanini Institute. Mm -hmm. the, the, our target is mainly to uh, create better digital inclusions for, for the poor people. Mm -hmm. not, not children, is um, uh, we can say people are uh, around uh, between 18 years old and 25, mm -hmm. because most part of these poor people that uh, is in this uh, age, mm -hmm. they, they, they finish that first part of the, the school, mm -hmm. but they didn't uh, find a job. Okay. Then they, they became like old, with uh, 21, 22, 23 years old. Mm -hmm. This is our target for create, giving them conditions to find their first job. Okay. And the, create these first conditions, not only tech, technology. To be honest, it's not the, the, the most important part. Mm -hmm. the, the most important part is creating a better self-esteem. Okay. Because what is the main problem for them? They don't believe on, on, in them. This mm -hmm. is the problem. They mm -hmm. need to, we need to motivate them. They, yes, like Obama, yes, we can. Yes, that's, this is, I think, the main uh, purpose or target of, the, of our institute. Okay, quite impressive. Now, like you mentioned it several times, Stefanini, you have Brazilian origin, so we can't hide that, right? And, and you're proud of, of that as well. So, so how much of the culture of the Stefanini company is Brazilian culture? How much of Brazil do you have in your company culture today? 
I think that we are proud to be a very global company mm -hmm. in terms of even culture. Mm -hmm. We like this. For example, here in Europe, our leadership, we have uh, in Belgium, uh, English, French, Romanian, oh. uh, uh, who more? Um, what more? Uh, German and also Brazilian. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we like this, this, yep. this mixed culture. Yep. I think, answer to your question, I think that uh, one of the characteristics of Brazilian, usually not all, of course, are more easygoing people, mm -hmm. more open to any other culture. Yep. Usually we love foreigners. It's mm -hmm. interesting this, as you said when we are in Brazil, yes? And, uh, and uh, this is, I think, that help us to create this mixed culture. Mm -hmm. This is so important. Uh, we understand. When we are talking today about diversity, yes? Of course, diverse about uh, sex, about, for example, uh, for our side, we... In, in Romania, for example, I think 70% of the leadership are women. Okay. In Brazil, it's 40%. Mm -hmm. In US, is around 40, 50%. In okay. technology, that is more male yeah, uh, industry, yep. is a fact. Mm -hmm. But not only this way or religion, or that, but also for culture. Mm -hmm. That I think is wonderful and I think is a strong asset. Yep mainly for our global uh, clients. Yep. How else would you describe the culture? I mean, you said it's, uh, we have a, uh, an, an inclusive culture, we are a, a very diverse multinational culture. Um, how, what are the other core values of the organization that, uh, that you stand for? It's interesting. What we def as we grew a lot in the last years and more global, of course, absorbing some acquisitions, yep and also a lot of different cultures, we defined that what we call seven attitudes. Mm -hmm. That's uh, we try to, to send a very didactic, simple message to them. Mm -hmm. And for example, one of them is leading by example. I strongly believe in this. That yeah. is not only speech, but you practice what you speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there are oh, customer centric is another one mm -hmm. that we define in seven very simple mm -hmm. uh, uh, attitudes that we understand to try to promote mm -hmm. and multiply our culture. But yeah. this is not an easy job. This is a long way. Yes. Yeah. Now I also understand that um, you are a, a very people-oriented organization. If I look at the, your, your Stefanini team, many of them will work for 8, 10, 12, 15 years already for, for, for your company. What is your magic ingredient there to, to attract the right people and to retain them for such a long time? Yes, it's a good question. I think uh, there, are, there are some from these attitudes like to be humble, mm -hmm. to listen to people, work as a group. Not only, you know, that digital now is more, the, the market is pushing more this kind of behavior, but mm -hmm. we practice, we are practicing this a long time, that listen to people to have a more lean organization, mm -hmm. not hierarchical. Also, we have... Uh, a structure that we give much more autonomy and uh, we believe more in the people that not so controlled uh, uh, organization and of course comes together with responsibilities mm -hmm. more ownership yeah. I think this kind of uh, models uh, incentives to keep the people yeah. together with us and uh, mainly in, in Europe also significant part of our leadership comes from the tech team side, yes. Yeah. There are many of them They're still with us. Now, I also understand that in your cult, you have a culture of working hard, right? Yes. An, a very entrepreneurial, work hard uh, culture. 
also very cost conscious is, is in the DNA of the organization. If you travel and you travel a lot, I, I understand you that you stay in, in quite humble hotels and everything. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. I, I strongly believe in this. Remember that leading by example, yes. Mm -hmm. If Because what happened in IT services, we are always, uh, the industry, are always squeezing by the, 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 the market. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very competitive yeah. market. Then we learn it. Mm -hmm. That is so important to, to drive the company in a more cost-effective way. Yeah. Okay? This is the first one. The second, as I have a Brazilian orange, Brazil always have a very high interest. That is for us and no investor support. Mm -hmm. We have it to survive by ourselves. Yeah. Without any low and then because low low and for banks is are uh, were so expensive. Oh, yeah. Still today, like, yeah. compared with Europe and the US, by far we are worse. Then we have to create like a DNA. Yeah. How to be more efficient? How to create business or better return on investment? How to create products and solutions? in a faster and, and less expensive way. Mm -hmm. That we have to practice this, yeah. that we create this DNA. And in this way, I again, this leading by example is, if I have a speech, but I don't practice, no. then for example, now we are, we join after one year and a half of this chaos, we join our commercial people in a very, very, um, very good is a hotel like a house uh, very friendly mm -hmm. cheap and the people are together of course I'm there yep. that's I, I like this that's I I, I work as a, any other that's okay. it is and uh, this is one point the other that you talk about the work harder mm -hmm. one of the growth mindset that represent a lot the digital mindset is we still we believe much more in, in working hard than talent, that you yeah. were born because you have a talent. You, mm -hmm. can, you can acquire anything if you want. Yeah. Then we understand efforts sometimes is more important than talent. Yeah. We strongly believe in this. So you have built this more than a billion dollar company without big loans and without uh, outside investment. Yes. It's all self-funded. Yes. As I told you that we have, we had this DNA, mm -hmm. DNA, and uh, and uh, today we still are a private company without any debt, mm -hmm. and we we could keep our acquisitions and our our um, our uh, investments, yeah. and uh, of course now you know the technology is a bigger game, yes. Mm -hmm. Then we are planning maybe to do some uh, new movements like IPO, something like that. Yeah. But always in, in thinking in a more long-term relationship, long-term vision. Yeah. Because we understand, of course, some pressure of uh, uh, having good results quarterly. Mm -hmm. We understand this is part of the game, but not only this. Yeah. Many in the digital world, digital transformation phase, we have to invest part of the, our time in something for the future. For example, in our that today our ventures are very successful, but five years not, uh, before not. Yeah. And I invested my time a lot in some business that in that time was not money. so interesting yeah. financially mm -hmm. speaking. That's I understand this balance. How to of course see some quarter uh, results, but also to see the long-term vision, yep. I think is very important. Yeah, I believe in this. Yeah. What is, how would you describe today, fundamentally your role as a CEO in the company? Where do you spend most of, of your time? What is fundamentally your role? This is a good question, because as I explained to you that we, we give a lot of autonomy in, in the front, mm -hmm. We divided the, for example, Stefanini in five 
business units. Mm -hmm. Ford e Stefanini. Stefanini e Mia. Stefanini North America e Asia Pacific. Stefanini Brazil e Stefanini Latin America. And the 50 tower is the Ventures. Okay? okay. And they run, they have their ownership. We follow the results monthly. And they have a lot of autonomy. Okay. Now, my role is much more integrated than to incentives them, incentive them to also to work more together. That's so important. Today, one of the main digital uh, fundamentals is working not as a silos, work integrated, but also to convincing people. Yes, because today, without purpose, the people not uh, not work well. Yes, mm -hmm. this is a different that motivate the people, show what we can do, uh, good things, outstanding uh, projects, add value to the society, contribute for the world. This is my main role today. It's like a, uh, it's like a more, um, it's a convincing uh, people mm -hmm. that uh, we can do. Great things. What is your secret in selecting the right people? Because that's so important. Eh? If you want to delegate, if you want to have decision, ownership in the business units, in the front lines, how do you select your best people? To be honest, I'm not the best guy to select people. Okay. Yes, to be honest. Uh, I like to say that we always work as a team, yes? Mm -hmm. It's a teamwork always. Then what means in this case? That when we, we are select someone, mm -hmm. is many leaders are interviewing the people, okay. okay? Not only one or two. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm not the best. <laughs> and I have to be humble in this way. First. The second... We are much more focused in evaluating the behaviors, the, comp uh, the behavior, and not only the knowledge or the experience. No. Because experience and knowledge you can acquire it. Behavior is, is more <laughs> difficult. And today, mainly in the digital transformation world is so is more important. But in the past it was the same. Yeah. Almost the same. Then Answer to your question, we are more pay attention in behavior. For example, to be more uh, proactive, uh, to be humble, mm -hmm. like to listen, love to serve someone, because we are in, in service area. Yep. We, have, uh, we need people that like, love to serve someone, mm -hmm. to deliver something interesting, yep. not only accommodate, like challenge. Mm -hmm. This is more or less that we are looking for. Okay. What is it that your people will say about you when you're not around? Uh, how can I maybe? Maybe they love to joke that uh, because I'm pushing them a lot, mm -hmm. this is my challenge to challenge them. Okay. This is maybe one of our, my, and they joke about this. That's, uh, for example, I can say that's now. I, I, I am for five weeks in Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, for a coincidence, our CEO uh, took COVID, mm -hmm. and all the CEOs uh, joke that he took COVID to 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 avoid me. That's okay. <laughs> That's but it's, of course it's a joke. But uh, this is I'm pushing them. That's mm -hmm. this is my role, and I, yeah. I'm very, I'm very direct and honest. This is yeah. my job. Yes. Okay. Now let's go back a little bit to the to the early beginnings of the company. In 1987, you started Stefanini, but you started this, if I understand well, together with with some of your family, with uh, sisters, with your wife. So, so tell me a little bit about the early days and how you grew this uh, this company. Uh, it was a funny time, yes, because when you, you, we are beginning, mm -hmm. that's interesting because first of all, you do everything, yes. Uh, of course. Uh, as we began a training, I, in that time I was a, a, a soft engineer for mainframes. Mm -hmm. And we, we sell 
training for mainframes. And uh, I'm, I, that time I was the sales guy, <laughs> the administration, the manager, and also the technical, that, the, the trainer. Yeah. Not all the courses because there are many training, but uh, I, I, many uh, I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, I like it because it's interesting because we know the front, yes. Yeah. One of sometimes the problems for big companies, the leaders are so far from the front line. Yeah. And I, is a, again, we try to push this characteristic for all our leaders to be v uh, very close to the front line. Yeah. Not only the clients, but also from our team. Yeah. That's I, and uh, I can say that I began at home. That's in my, in my room. That's today we call our innovation center 87 room because it's uh, the year that we began. Oh, yeah. And uh, the first people that joined me was my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she is a psychologist. And that time, I began as a trainer because I'm tra I was a trainer and and also the second uh, uh, role for for the company was recruiting people mm -hmm. because she came from this side oh, yeah, from this psychology side. yeah and uh, but uh, some one uh, I think one or two years uh, more we 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 gave up this business because is we understand uh, it's not that time for us, it was not a good business. And then she worked with me many, many years. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. My sister also worked with me. Now uh, she's not uh, working anymore, but she worked for 27 years. And, uh, but it's not easy. Yes, uh, we try to, 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 when you have some family people working, it's not easy. No. But uh, as everything, that's, there, are, there are some pros and cons. Yeah. Yes? We have to manage it. Yeah. But to a certain extent, it's, it's a family business today. Also, your oldest son, uh, you have two sons. One is 30, one is 26, if I'm not mistaken. They both studied business, but your oldest son also works in, in, in Stefanini, right? Yes, again, I love always the uh, hybrid models mm -hmm. in a more balanced way, yes? Yeah. As I said, we are now, we have plans to do IPO, mm -hmm. to have a more sustainable business. We also have a very strong uh, governance system. We already have a board for the last 14 years. We are a private company, but we have this. Uh, and uh, I always send a, a message to my sons that they are not obliged to work with, yes, <laughs> with the business because Anything obliged is not good. No. And uh, both him, uh, both then, they they began the career as a consultant in other companies. They work in many years in mm -hmm. different companies. My youngest son is still is working not in Stefanini. Then when they decide, but also they know that uh, they can be only a board. At least they have to do to be at least a board member, mm -hmm. yes, but not necessarily to be executive all the time. That's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's important to to be very clarified because again, uh, family business there are some good aspects like more long term vision, yeah. more of course uh, uh, more commitment in the long term because your name and to, uh, those. But also there are some, some problems, some potential issues you have mm -hmm. to be careful. Yeah. Then this is the, if we implement a good governance model, uh, we know even in Europe, there are a lot of uh, companies that are a little bit mixed, yes? Yeah. Family business, but uh, open in the stock market. I, I like this, this balanced way. Okay. Now, Let's talk a little bit more about you as, 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 a, as a private person. Um, what is it that you, I mean, you're clearly very passionate about building this, this, this company and you have already uh, 
have an, an amazing journey of the last 35 years. But outside of work, what is it that is, what is, what is your main passion there? Uh, I love to travel. Mm -hmm. I think the first one that helped me uh, in this international um, operation that I, I love to travel. And you've discovered Mechelen today. <laughs> yes, that's in a great discovery. Yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know that Belgium, there are so many small cities or mm -hmm. mid-sized cities. That's yeah. I, I, Then, first, first of all, it's traveling. I love yeah. it. This is my main time. This is, I, I know, I think, uh, almost 120 countries. I love to travel, know different cultures. I love it. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, I, 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 I like very much history. Then is, uh, Europe is a good mix, yes? <laughs> Traveling and, yep. and co uh, life quality and also history. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's the second. Third, I love open space. Then uh, I love to walk, I love to... Uh, walking, I, I, I practice a lot, mainly okay. the, during the, the pandemic times. I, today, I have, last year, uh, the average 15 kilometers per day. Per day? Yes. And uh, most of the time, some, some days, only a few days I run, but because I don't run a lot. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I walk and walking, working. Then I put that uh, working, that two, three, four hours, w w not uh, the, the same period, two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. And work, of course, there are some meetings, more internal meetings mm. or some discussion that, I, uh, that is possible to, to do it. Okay. Yes. But of course, there are some clients that I have to be in the TV and uh, in the in the the computer. But uh, this is I love to see open air. Okay. Anything that I love to walking, and uh, this weekend I spend my days in in Ghent and uh, in, in Bruges. In Bruges walking. I in in Bruges on Saturday I walk uh, 25 kilometers <laughs> that day. I walk and walk. And uh, I, I love it. That's open space. Okay. That's uh, that's uh, I love it. And sometimes practicing bicycle, or bike, yes, and uh, some any other sport, but in open air, I, yep. I love it. Your people also told me that you're very curious. That you always want to learn things. That you read a lot of books as well. Is that correct? Yes. Um, as I told you, that traveling, yes. He's, uh, uh, we can learn a lot about uh, other cultures. I, I love to to learn about uh, other cultures. Also, eating, mm -hmm. yes, is a good way to <laughs> eat and drinking. To learn a culture. Yes. Here, for example, it's almost impossible to go to Belgium and uh, Germany and not drink a good beer. Yeah. And, they, and uh, of course, that's, uh, I love it. That's I, I, I love it. I think it's, to be curious is interesting because you can learn so much as you can, we are always learning. That's yep. again, come back to listen, yes? Listen the client, listen to our team, yep. listen what the people are talking, that's it. Yep. And, and the read, to be honest, I like to read, love to read, but in the past, I, I, I read more than now today. Today my, Mainly when I'm traveling, I travel. Yeah. Now I come back. That's of course there is a there was a in, yeah, a, a gap because the the COVID. But usually I travel a lot, working hard and like to to walk and to to enjoy. That no make much more time <laughs> to to read it. But when I have time, that's I I prefer biography. Yeah. What is your What is your background, family wise? Tell Tell me a little bit about your father and your mother. Okay, my fortunately they are still alive mm -hmm. because I'm sixty years old. Yeah, and they married very young. Okay, then they are still alive. Is a middle class. Mm -hmm. Maybe began lower middle class then become better and uh, they are always uh, support all the family in terms of uh, 
good study. But they're also an entrepreneurial family, that where you come from, right? Yes. My, my mother has a very strong uh, energy. Okay. Yes, I love it. For party that you talk about uh, Brazilian, that she, she, has, she has very optimist. She's a very happy person. And uh, my father has also a more entrepreneur spirit. And uh, you know, there are some simple things, some simple support that can help us so much when we are growing. Absolutely. Yes. But it's a, in a simple way, yeah. yes, because they are not sophisticated person. My, 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 my father and my mother never uh, did in, neither uh, 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 only the basic studies, yeah. my mother. My father went to a university only when I was 15 years old. Okay. That's, uh, they are simple person. For example, they only travel out of Brazil when my young sister married in Germany oh, yeah. <laughs> in 20, maybe 24 years ago. Yeah. Then uh, they are simple, but they, they can maybe, I, I, I joke that she's a wise person that can give the right uh, advice mm -hmm. in a simple way. Yeah. And what was the main thing that you learned from your father? I, I think that they, he is not afraid to, to try. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, today the people are talking a lot about digital. You have to try. You Fail you, fast. And, yes. Yeah. My father, oh, if you fail, many times I failed, he never criticized me. Okay. But also, I'm always responsible for my fails. <laughs> he never supports me. It's interesting. Yeah. He never criticized me. He always supported with words. Okay, let's let's do again. Okay, but it's your problem. It's your Not money. My, it's your it's problem. Your money, your problem. <laughs> this what, is important. Yeah. And what did you learn from your mother? Yes, I always remember her that uh, you have to, to try because they know you already have. Mm -hmm. Then you have to try. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Now. Marco, you're very successful. You've created a great company, but I can imagine you also had your setbacks. You had your failures. You had your problems. The, you have even a book about you, which is called The Son of the Crisis. So tell me a little bit, what was the, the, the worst things in business as the, that ever happened to you? Uh, as I told you, that's, I, I came from Brazil. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Brazil was not an easy country to do business. Mm -hmm. Of course, in a negative way, you suffer more. Mm -hmm. In a positive way, we become more resilient. Yeah. How to drive in a more dynamic, in more uh, challenging times, mm -hmm. like today. Yeah. That for me, today helped me. But maybe the... F maybe the worst situation, worst crisis was... 31 years ago, mm -hmm. 90, when the, entered a new Brazilian government and we had a very high inflation that time. And to, to fight against the high inflation, he, the government had a wonderful <laughs> idea, I'm joking, of course, to, to, uh, to get all the money in the bank that's they they left only very amount of money in mm -hmm. all the, the accounts in in people and companies wow. and they almost stopped the imagine this they stopped it not the, uh, they stopped the, the economy almost yes this is the idea ah. it's crazy idea yes and uh, for me, only to, at that time, we were a training company. Mm -hmm. In the previous year, we only to have, a, it was a very small company, very small. Mm -hmm. And one of, uh, we, we offer uh, what we call some courses, yes? Maybe in, in the previous year, because it's the first year for training, we gave uh, maybe 15 courses by our by Stefanini because yep. I work for other companies. And 
that time we are expecting the double 31 courses only for the next three months okay. that we can multiply the company. Business was looking good. Yes. <laughs> when this guy, our president that time, did this wonderful decision, from this 31, only one I did. And I received the money five months later. Mm -hmm. And destroy my business. The and also without money to pay my my bills and uh, and your people, I, I, yes, my people and my yes. And uh, that year, I remember that uh, I did, I think, around sixty presentations, personal, mm -hmm. explaining what Stefanini could do for the clients yeah. for one day. Yes, because that the year was very tough. And the following year was very good, of course, compared with my previous. We multiplied no. the company six, seven times. Of course, in a very, is a different scale. Mm -hmm. But this is, for me, the worst period. And interesting, because I did migration uh, asking for Canada and Australia. Yes. How you wanted to immigrate? Yes. And fortunately, you no, know, the answer from Canada came only one year later, mm -hmm. and I I already did my turnaround. Okay, maybe <laughs> if it came six months, you would have been a Canadian by now. Maybe by we now. never know. Okay, so that was some of the, the the most important crisis. What what was the best thing that has ever happened to you? Not necessarily in business, but also in personal life. What was the best thing that has ever happened to you? Depends on point of view, yes. Mm -hmm. If you see, when I get out the university, mm -hmm. when I finish, finish the university, Brazil was in the first big crisis. On other one half, on one hand, is was bad, of course, it was bad. Yeah. But maybe it was the best thing for me because obliged me to create this like a DNA to be more resilient. And I changed my profession. Remember, that's yeah. you began our interview. That's uh, I was a geologist. I studied yeah. geology, yes. But to be honest, I always work in, in IT. Yeah. That for me may be this. Or maybe the first big acquisition that uh, allowed us to be global, like Tech Team. Yeah. Or maybe now, in the last uh, seven, eight years, that we took the decision to create this innovation and digital ecosystem. Mm -hmm. that, there are some, uh, some opportunities that are important. And on a personal important. level, on really, really a personal level, what was, the, what was the best things that have happened to you? I think that, uh, sorry, but uh, I always follow the cliche that's uh, having two sons. That's, uh, to be honest, is, you know, life passed too fast in my age. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we, we have some, uh, it's very important what do you, you, uh, you uh, leave here. Yes, yep. leave here? Yeah, yes. what you leave behind. Huh? Yes, we leave behind. Okay. Do you have a personal mantra? Do you have a saying that, that, that you use that, that helps you? As I said to you, the no we already have, mm -hmm. then we have to try it. Uh, the other is see the half full glass. Mm -hmm. is, is very important when we are in tough times. Always when we have a crisis, we have opportunity mm -hmm. because uh, the companies, the people, when they are in the comfort zone or in, the, in a good uh, scenario, they never change. Mm -hmm. when, they have, uh, when they have some, um, some uh, difficult times, they are obliged to change. Then we can be a good challenger for them. Yeah. Yes, this is other one, okay? And the, the last one, I like to say that many people that when we achieve some, oh, you are lucky. <laughs> the, then I like to say, okay, uh, it's funny. Then I realize that how I work more, 
I realized that uh, I, I was, uh, I am more lucky yep. person, yes. The harder you work, the luckier you are. The more luck comes your way, absolutely. Now, let's go one step deeper and, and, and let's talk about the core values that drive you. What are the core values that you are passing on to your children, for instance? What, do you, what values do you want to see your children and maybe in the future your grandchildren to live by? I think that not only for, for my children, but also for my team, mm -hmm. that effort is more important than talent. Mm -hmm. You can reach what you want. You, uh, if you are dedicated, if you, if you work hard. Um, second, think bigger, raise the bar all the time, mm -hmm. but gradually. Not only dreaming 10,000 meters feet, uh, 10,000 meters above, but also gradually you can, we can, you can uh, think bigger and raise the bar. The other is, uh, I think, listen the people, and to listen the people and pay attention, we need to be humble. Mm -hmm. Because if you think you are better than others, we never pay attention to them because you are better. Yeah. Then I think it, and you can lose a lot of opportunity to, to learn. I think maybe this kind yeah. of uh, things. In your life, you have met some of the most amazing people, I understand. You have met uh, Barack Obama, Angela Merkel, and so on. Who are the, the, the key figures in your life? Who are the mentors, the, the people that you have learned from in your life? Okay, uh, maybe in terms of um, leadership, mm -hmm. I I love two guys that so are, uh, were so different. That uh, Mandela, that a great leader, that uh, he after thirty years in jail, he he could uh, regret all he passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did a great job to join a country that were almost exploding. Yeah, that was completely divided. Yep. Yes, totally opposite what, uh, what happened, unfortunately, with Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe was in a better position than South Africa and, and, and uh, finished in a much worse oh, yeah. position. That's, I, 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 and also for, Tough times, Winston Churchill. That is, but is is more a polemic guy. Many now, but a very strong uh, leader, mm -hmm. courage. That's I like it. In terms of uh, today, that's unfortunately, as you mentioned, uh, Merkel is is finishing her cycle. Um, I understand that, of course, any leader. Is not uh, uh, unanimous that the people like it, but uh, I think it, she was definitely one of the great leaders. Unfortunately, she's leaving. Well, she had a, uh, she was there for eighteen or, or twenty yes, years. I mean, yes, uh, yes. impression and on the, everybody on has their cycle. To be honest, she had a long cycle, yeah, longer than others. Yeah. That's uh, finish. But and uh, we see a uh, serious gap leadership mm -hmm. globally. Yes, unfortunately, yeah. I I saw this, and also I have, as you said, my my parents also, uh, and uh, I always try to pay attention and learn for some people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes great leaders, sometimes simple people. Yeah. that they always they are giving some some uh, good suggestions. Okay. One of the things that I understand that you do in your organization is you develop the quote of the, of the week. Every week you send something inspiring to your team. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I like this. this. I think one point is, key point is communication. Mm -hmm. That I, I forgot to say this. Mainly when we are tough periods. Mm -hmm. For example, when began the COVID, you know that is, it was the first time that we have economic and uh, health uh, uh, threat. Yep. Yes, and 
What it did, mainly in the first three, four months, that the people didn't know what, what uh, we would happen, we tried to, to do a very strong communication. Mm -hmm. That's between my leaders. We, we, we did that time during, I think, first two, three months, meeting monthly, Every day, one one hour meeting, including uh, weekends. Of course, later we can, of course, um, we 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 will define one once per week. Then we this, but also communicate for the front line. Remember, because all the companies has a lot of uh, levels and the filters. Yes, yeah. and. As far as you could to send a message for all the people, mm -hmm. no filters, yes. Then is, it is one of the example, try to send a good message to the people. That's, yep. uh, because again, I think most of, if you, we can do some more challenging things, more challenge, uh, it's important to believe, yes, that it creates a better self-esteem, to mm -hmm. raise the bar. It's much more behavior than knowledge. Yep. Remember that this yep. is... Absolutely. Then communication is key. Yep. This, I, I, I like this. I try to do a good job on this. <laughs> Not always, but we try. We do our best. What I'm most amazed about, Marco, to be, to be very honest, I mean, building a company from, from scratch to over a billion dollars. I mean, you first need to make your first million, then you have to, to go to 10 million, then to 100 million, then to a billion. Typically, it would take different leadership to go from zero to one, to one to 10, to 100 and, and, and a million. So how did you develop yourself? Because you have to be a different leader to go from 100 to a, to a billion and to zero to one. How did you do that? It is a very good question because when we began, usually most of the, the, the entrepreneurs are, are like a sales guy mm -hmm. because they have to sell something, not only their clients, but sell idea some how you can hire, hire people because no. you don't have anything. Yes. Then you usually, not all, many now, uh, now in digital change a little bit, but usually you are a sales guy, okay? In more entrepreneur, you take more risk. Yep. During that time, you have to balance, yes? Mm -hmm. Because you have to administrate. And it is happening with the startups today. It's a good guy, wonderful vision, very user experience, very focus, focus in clients, customer services, uh, very customer centric. But during that time, when you become bigger, you have to administrate. No. Like or not, you <laughs> have to administrate. Yes, any part of the business, that operations, some things that sometimes people don't like. Yep. Uh, then you are correct. We, I had to change my behavior, my profile, many times, oh, yeah. many, many times. And again, come back to be humble, to listen, because I never had any administration school. Mm -hmm. I never been a manager before beginning the company. I have mm -hmm. to learn everything inside on the, the job, company, yeah. on the job. Yeah. And usually we are the first one. We've, we feel very alone, yes, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. Uh, in the end, the decision is mine, yes. But uh, it's important how to share with the people. And the people help us a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I, I understand more than agree. Then this is, uh, I, I think that uh, is, and this is one point. The second point is always a teamwork, remember? that is interesting to have different profiles in your team. One, some most mistake for entrepreneurs is hiring people like you. Yes. And uh, of course, they will say this, they will have the same mindset. Yeah. And 
We need people that think different. Yeah. It's more fighting, it's more difficult, but much more useful. Yeah. Then this is, I think, two. One is listen, and another one is having a good self-esteem mm -hmm. to one side, one side to 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 uh, to learn about your mistakes. Mm -hmm. That not put the reason for external reason. It's my mistake. But on the other side, not to to decrease my self esteem. Do you understand? It's, yep. it's not easy. Yes. You have to evaluate very uh, hard your behavior, your mistake yep. to learn. But uh, on the other hand, also not to decrease that, uh, ah, yes, it's not possible. I, I never uh, do this. That's mm -hmm. is, is not an easy process. Of course, there are, you can go and back forward. Yes, yep. that's going back. But uh, I, I, It's important to, to have this spirit. You have to learn and never, and also we have to get out of our comfort zone. Yes, mm -hmm. this is, and having different uh, teams, yeah. different people in the team. Yeah. If I may ask, Marco, you're now 60. So you've been working ter almost 35 years on building this great company. How do you see yourself in the next five, 10 years? How long are you still going to drive this company? Yes, uh, I think more and more in a short period, in two, three years, more in a, in a advising, mm -hmm. uh, in a advising uh, oh. uh, job, yes, mm -hmm. to, to advise, to, to create this. We are working hard in, uh, in developing people, okay. we, uh, de developing leaders. Yep. Because you know that the life you one day is finish my cycle, as we talked about yeah. uh, Merkel, she had a great uh, job, but one day finish, yeah. and it's like us, yes. Now, Marco, these videos are watched by digital leaders, but also by entrepreneurs. And so, what I would like to ask you as a last question for, for people that look up to you. And, and look the, the success that you have achieved, what would be the number one or two or three advice that you would give them? If people want to be a successful entrepreneur in, in the digital and tech space, what is your main advice to them? Maybe a summary of what I've already said, working hard, as always, raise the bar, believe in people. I think this is key because nobody can do alone I know that everybody say this, mm -hmm. but practicing is, you know, speaking is always easy, the easier than practicing, Absolutely. doing. Yeah. And uh, believe in people, because today mainly, you have to believe. Giving them autonomy, uh, ownership, mm -hmm. a strong belief. I don't like matrix model, okay? I don't like. Okay. I don't like. I have. It's very clear who will do something. I think maybe I think is, and uh, maybe joking, but it's, it's a true joke in that you we have stomach yes, to support, cry, support the tough times, because the tough times we can learn with the tough times. When we are in the comfort zone, in a good time, you never learn. Mm -hmm. Or learn very, very uh, not so much, so much. That's, this is, we have to like the adrenaline, the challenge, and uh, this is part of your life. If you decide to, to be a leader, to be an entrepreneur, to, to raise your position, Always will, but it's like, it's, it's good. I love it. Yeah. That's it. It's a learning process, yes. And not always will you be successful. We fail a lot. And uh, sometimes we have some hard days. It's part of the job. We could, I, I joke that uh, we, for even for my leaders, that sometimes we, we lost something that's, the people were up, uh, are upset, of course. You can be 
upset maybe hours or days, but never <laughs> weeks or months. Yes, mm -hmm. that's is part of your. But in the end, you are building your profile. That's yeah. uh, uh, I maybe this. Okay, and with that. Marco, I would like to thank you for coming over to our office here in Mechelen. It was a pleasure uh, welcoming you here. It was a pleasure having this wonderful con uh, conversation. I look forward to meeting you soon again. Okay, thank you, Hendrik, for... Uh, it's a wonderful surprise, the city <laughs> and your offices. It's great. You are very kind. Thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, good luck for your... Okay. A lot of ini good initiatives, yes? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.